if the doing the test was possible or still no pressure however huh? okay text gen then um, so uh, I will share I will share the slides um, I will share the slides also later. I don't know what van how, but I will send you a PDF of the slides. Uh, so people who want to look back to it uh, are able to do that. So the practical work, let's uh, try to work um, for uh, somewhat more than an hour with, um, with TextGen. So uh, the first thing is you should install it. Now I'm a little bit afraid TextGen has on my computer screen, quite a small uh, font. So text gen. If you succeeded in installing, if you start it up, you should see this text gen. So to the left, you have controls, um, and you have some buttons under the textile control and you can see you can you have the textile control you have the modeler yeah you have the domain control you have the rendering control and you have a python control so you can interact with text gen through python by running a python and generating domains that's what you would do if you would want to do a, a knit or, or another uh, non-standard woven structure uh, but we need to start ourselves with uh, a textiles control you have your menu bar uh, you can save whatever you are making as a text gen file you can open it again you can save screenshots so you don't need to do uh, you don't need to do the snipping tool or print screen. You can import from a few other programs and you can export, as you can see, you can export through quite a bit of different um, formats. And so STL file or the kind of things you can 3D print, you can export the surface as an abacus file, you can export the volume mass, and you can export it as uh, voxel, as TextGen. Those are all uh, types to then work with, with it later on. Step file, etc. Okay. Um, the, well, everything you see in your controls is then also available through the textiles, the modeler, the domain, the rendering, and the Python uh, menus. And you have some extra tools uh, to compute some of these properties we have seen. Uh, your, the pattern draft is a way to compute how you should operate with a standard weaving machine your, uh, your weaving loop. So how many warp yarns has to be connected to different frames and how do they have to be connected to the frames? And then how do you have to lift the the frames in order to create the correct shed to weave. And that is what is a pattern draft, and that can then be created in this tool. If you give, uh, if you give properties of your yarn, you can also compute the volume fraction of your fabric, resulting fabric, and the yarn fiber volume fraction. Okay. Um, at the bottom, you have uh, the Python console, Python output, and text gen output. This is also, a, you will see when you add things, what the Python commands are that the interface is generating. This allows you to learn what Python controls are uh, present, and uh, you can then also copy those controls into a program, Python program file, and execute it through the Python console. If there are errors, you should see them in the Python output. Okay, 
or the test gen output. To the right hand side, you see the outliner. This will tell you what is present in your view. The view is in the center and you can edit by hand on uh, what is seen uh, through the outliner here. You can insert, insert extra nodes, you can duplicate yarns and you can delete parts. You can delete a node or you can delete a yarn which is on your screen. Okay. So to create a standard woven structure, we do that uh, through the simplest way and that is through the weave wizard. So in your controls textile, you can create an empty view and then start to draw on it. Instead, uh, you can have a weave wizard to create a standard weave. You can have a 3D weave wizard to create the default 3D woven structures. And you can do a layered wizard in order to generate multi-layer textiles, multi-layer woven textiles. So let's click on the weave. And then the weave wizard opens. Let me put this a bit to the left. So that I can show two things at the same time. So the weave wizard opens. And in the weave wizard, you give uh, your how you will design. Um, so I see here, uh, you have to give how many warp yarns are present in your basic structure, how many weft yarns, uh, what is the, the spacing between the yarns. This is in an independent unit, uh, so it's just a, a size unit. You can think of it as millimeter if you want, and then type everything as if it is in millimeter. Now, obviously, your yarns have to be sufficiently far away so that you can do interlacing. Uh, if you have a yarn spacing of one, then a yarn width of 0 0.8 will be able to go through it. Your fabric thickness says how thick your yarn has to be. Now, if your yarn width is 0 0.8 and your thickness is 0 0.22, this is only possible if your yarn is compressed very much. Yes. Um, so create 3D weave, you should leave off. Create layer textile, you should leave off. And for the rest, you can use create a default domain. You add some percentage to the domain height in order to see it better. Uh, you can have text gen create a base model and then update it, refine it in order to fit better with the settings you are giving. Uh, force in plane tangents at nodes. Um, yeah, that's to have a that's normal for your um, simulation. Um, so I have given here an example. Let's create a herringbone twill beef. So herringbone twill looks here like in this bottom left, and you have diagonal. It's a, it's a two, two, so two over, two under, twill. And um, we need to shift it. So this is the thing you would make here. Ah. It's quite. Sorry, I had uh, problems with controls being in the way. So you, you could, this one is the one here, the example, the herringbone twill. And so this, uh, let's put it a bit bigger so you see it better. Let's put it at 200. Yeah, this was made. So this is the kind of structure you would be making, a herringbone twill, as in that uh, woven structure spreadsheet that we have. So we know already in order to be able to make that, the base structure is, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then it repeats. Yeah. And also here it is eight on four. So in, in your visualization software, you will know you need an eight on four pattern to be able to do that. Eight warp yards and four weft yards. 
Yes, so this here has been um, set, and then we will make our structure. So let's do that now in text gen. So we need uh, eight board yarns for a herringbone twill, as we want it, four weft yarns. Uh, let's leave as much spacing around our fabric as the width of our yards itself. Yeah, and let's give a fabric. Okay, so the yarn is 0 0.8. If when the yarns cross, we have 0 0.8 on top of 0 0.8. Let's try to fit that into a thickness of one. Yeah. Then you press next. And then a new pattern opens. And you can see that might be counterintuitively, the warp yarns are um, horizontal and the weft yarns are vertical. So now you need to create this structure, yeah, but in a rotated way uh, in order to have your, your uh, construction. Yeah, so it was uh, this, this. So you make that herringbone twill the same way as you have uh, made it. As you can see it. Yeah. So you can see for this herringbone twill, I have taken the structure which is indicated here, which I know is a herringbone twill. You rotate it because here the warp yarns are vertical. And um, you can see by clicking on um, by right clicking, you can investigate how it will move through your sample. And so this is by right click. You can see, so the blue is the warp yarn and the red is uh, the left yarn. Uh, and you can investigate uh, how it passes. If you would give other yarn spacings, uh, it would be different. Yeah, and you see that uh, there is, uh, so the, the yarn spacing is 0 0.8, that um, this is not giving a lot of room for the yarns to pass, yeah? Okay, so let's... I need to go back to text gen and okay. So if you have drawn your weaving, uh, your weave structure, in this case, your twill. I hope uh, everybody has this. Perhaps you should raise your hand if okay, because if I press okay, it will be gone. Will not see it anymore. I can continue for everyone. Yeah. So I press okay. And then TextGen will start to compute. Okay, I have to wait for it. It's on a different screen and it takes quite some time and it depends a bit on your uh, processor, the strength of it. Here is the result. And you can see that, so with the left mouse, you can rotate. 
Yeah. So let's put it the same way as uh, thing. And with the right mouse moving forward and backward, you can zoom. And you can see how uh, TextGen has deformed all your yarns in order to fit into the settings you give. And so if you, you make a woven structure uh, and you say, yeah, it, it has to be, uh, I, I will be using yarns of this size. I want to arrive at a thickness of so thick. You can evaluate if this is somewhat possible with the constraints you give. And if it seems, yeah, if it's almost not computable, if there's no space for the yarns, it will normally also not work in reality. Yeah. Now to see this a bit nicer, let's go to the rendering controls. And uh, let's do the surface uh, fixed color. Yeah, this allows you to see much better the twill construction where you go from top, bottom, on over a, a twill way. Seems that I rotated this like that in that image. And it's a bit different. If you click here now with shift click, you can bring it forward even more and you see your, your diagonal lines coming up. If you want to have it, if it's more for rendering and you want to have it uh, a bit nicer, and uh, then uh, you can do here the axis away. No. Domain in access. And you have different ways of uh, of looking at it that you can set in your rendering tool. So congratulations, you have generated your first structure of, um, of uh, a standard woven uh, construct. Now, let's look what the draft plan would be for such a thing. Now, the draft plan in TextGen is not as there are more optimized draft plans often possible. So let's create a draft plan. So here you see your woven structure. So these are your um, yeah your um, left, the white is the weft yarns uh, at the top. Yeah. So you can see that this corresponds to the structure that we have made. Yeah. And um, this at the top are your frames. You need four frames. And the black squares indicate what warp yarn is connected to that frame. So here, the first and the sixth warp yarns are connected to this frame. Uh, and um, yeah, you see how they are connected. This here then is to weave, let's say this is, uh, okay, typically, and this, the bottom one is your first line you want to weave. You need to activate those two levers because they are black and this lever connects with the first frame and this lever connects with the second frame so these two levers are brought up these two levers are brought up so that is the third and the fourth yarn and the seventh and the eighth yarn are brought upward it creates a shed and you can weave so these two here are up and these two are up to, to weave the next line. So this is what the result will be. You need to lift the first frame and the fourth frame, the first one and the fourth one. And these two are black. They are connected like this. So this one is lifted and the back is lifted. So the first yarn is lifted and the one to last yarn and also those two. Yeah. 
So you see how this draft plan corresponds with the manipulation you have to do on a weaving loom in order to get your construction. So whatever you put in your weaving wizard, if you make a larger construction, you, you indicate everything that you want to have, and then your draft plan uh, comes out automatically uh, with this, and you can save it as, uh, as wanted. I can see now that I made a different type of, uh, of a twill here in my example previously. Okay, doesn't matter. Okay. Um, else is there to say okay now let's uh, save this file save next gen file um, just the standard save is good let's call this on my folder Okay, any questions on this? Did this work for everyone? Yeah? Okay, let's then do a, a new one. So you go back to your textiles. And let's consider a more specialty construction, which is the default in, um, in um, text gen, which is uh, weaving with strips. Uh, if you are doing the type of composite construction, your you typically weave with tape yards. Yeah. So, okay, if there would be an assignment now, it would be live. I would give you a, a weave type, and it would say uh, I would give some different sizes of yarns, and you should uh, create your own structure. Yeah, a set. Uh, I already indicated this. Uh, when you have specialty yarn, you need to give your cross section. So let's make a tape yarn. Um, when you are doing larger, when you are using text gen, the tape, the tape yarn is the default structure. Uh, it has a width of 0 0.8, but the fabric thickness is set to 0 0.2. Yes, so you have 0 0.8 on 0. Two, the yarns have to cross. So at specific locations, you have two yarns on top of each other. So TextGen interprets this as a yarn of 0 0.1 thick and 0 0.8 wide. Okay. Now the yarn spacing is one. What does that mean? The yarn spacing is middle to middle. The yarn spacing is one and the width is 0 0.8. So we have a gap of 0 0.2 between the yarns with which the uh, with which in which the, the yarns can pass. And this 0 0.2 is the space we leave for the tape yarns then to uh, to pass. As I just said, that uh, the thickness is 0 0.1. And with the thickness of 0 0.1 should not be a problem to pass in a gap of 0.2. But these are the kinds of, of uh, interpretations that you need to make when setting the values and to have it all correct. So you open text gen the weave wizard. Let's do a plain weave, two on two. A yard spacing of one, a yard width of 0 0.8 and a thickness of 0 0.2 and create a structure with that. So, text gen, this is under weave. Uh, these are, if I'm not mistaken, the full default values 2210.802. Yeah. So, next, now we need to just do a plain weave. Let me do the same one. Yes. So, so with the right button, now you can see how this goes. And you can see already that, that this thickness is. The yarn is already spread out automatically by 
text gen to satisfy this height of 0 0.1 and thickness of 0 0.8. And now you see this gap here of 0 0.2 in which the yarn can play. So you see it, it need not go very strict. It has some space to move. Now, if your image that you see in your weave pattern, pattern wizard is quite irrealistic, then you entered wrong data and you should cancel. This seems very realistic, so press OK. He starts to compute. And this is our result, a nice tape yarn construction, a typical plain weave as used in uh, carbon fiber uh, processing of uh, a lot of materials. Now let's, uh, let's uh, use that to have a look. If you go to rendering, if you switch off the surface and instead click on the parts, you can see what TextGen is doing in the background. He is creating different parts given here with different yarns. And you can click on the yarns in order to see the axis per yarn of where you are. Yeah, you can see that TextGen is quite simplistic, although it's a complex, if you look at the surface, it seems a complex structure. In reality, everything is done with only three nodes. If you put the nodes on it, and you can look at, you can click on the nodes, and you can see every node as it is present. Yeah. So this is node um, so by um, going to the modeler you have an option to fully edit how this uh, is set. And if you change your node, so you click on move, click on a node, and then the axis you want to move is uh, comes another color. And you can change that slightly. And you see here your positions of that node then changing. And so the positions Let's set that back to zero. But this is why I said uh, save your previous one because text gen just crashed. So yeah, if you start to do uh, specific things, that can happen. So let's just restart it. Okay. So leave next. Oh, okay. So in the rendering I did, I show the parts and the nodes, not the surface. And then in the modeler, I just say changed node. Over, okay. And then go back to our renderer and You can see that because we did that, everything looks a bit wrong, but you can then re-render how things are uh, happening. And this is also because our domain is not good now. But I just wanted to show here that you have full control in order to edit, and uh, that's it for now. Let's consider a next example in which we uh, we want to add an, uh, we want to add conductive yarn let's call it a filament yarn in such a woven structure yeah. so in that case uh, so okay this we did so we want to combine 
different cross-section yarns into the same structure. So let's consider, for example, a metal monofilament we want to add in the warp and the weft. In uh, four times four, we have a four times four plain weave, and we enter at the center uh, a metal monofilament. So create a five times five plain woven structure, add the metal yarn in the center, but that center yarn, of course, then has to have a different uh, size, a different cross-section, because it's a different type of material. So the yarn itself can be a lenticular shape of 0 0.3 wide on 0 0.1. Thickness, well, uh, the copper wire uh, has a, a diameter of, uh, is just round with a diameter of 0 0.15. Okay, so the thickness is 0 0.1. So let's take a fabric thickness means will be 0 0.2. And uh, we have a 0 0.3 wide yarn. So we will need a yarn spacing. Uh, the 0 0.1 has to be able to pass. So let's take then a yarn spacing, let's say of 0 0.4. Yeah. Uh, and with that, you should have the logical values to set in the weave wizard. Yeah? So these are the settings of the weave wizard then. Let's generate that with text gen. Okay, let me save my 2D weave first. File, save text gen file. Standard weave. Okay, so you go to the controls to textile and um, you open the weave wizard. Yes, so five on five. And because it's four on four with the conductive yard added in the middle, then uh, I set the, the value that we have is yard of 0 0.3 thickness of 0 0.2, so the yard spacing should be around 0 0.4, yeah? Then you do next, and uh, you obtain your uh, default uh, value. So let's make it now, let's make it, let's see how it was done here, so it's a bit the same. <laughs> So you make it a uh, plain weave. Yeah. It gives you some time to do that too. You can see that from the cross section that this is all working quite good. But now this center, the red in the center and the blue in the center should be a different type of yarn. More specifically, we said it's a monofilament copper yarn of 0 0.15. Yeah? So this is a monofilament copper yarn of 0 0.15. So you can click here on specific settings for the yarns by making it red. So you click on the box at the start, the red box, and then you right click. And you, see, you can see that you can change the yarn width, height, and spacing for this yarn. So set the yarn width 0 0.15. And let's do the same for this other yarn. Set the yarn width to 0 0.15. That is working. Now we could change our yarn spacing. Let's not make it over complex. Uh, let's now leave it just like that. Uh, and press OK so that we start to compute.
take some time. So this is our result. You can see that this is, let's go to renderer to see it nicely, rendering. I will put the surface on this color, okay? And let's then select, ah, I missed. Then surface, okay, and let's select. Again, let's do this. For some reason, I do not succeed in selecting my my uh, round ones. Annoying. Try one last time. Okay. I must have something wrong. Paul. Sometimes this is doing strange. Probably because I still have this move tool on and that was not what had to happen. Okay. Now we know what the problem is, but we cannot correct, of course, because now I lost my the view on my sample. So I will close this and I will just start again. Textiles, weave, five from five. For the settings, Okay, set the yarn width 0 0.15, set the yarn width 0 0.15, okay, okay. Let him compute. Okay. So now my modeler has a select on, okay. My rendering, I think now it will work, okay. That's, uh, yeah, so these are our two samples. Now, I said this was a metal one, and if you look closely, TextGen has changed it to somewhat ellipsoid, and there's sufficient room to fit, but still there's some pressure on it. So the, the normal way is that this has become not anymore a round image. So this is not correct. We know, because this is copper, we know that this will not deform. So, in order to fix this, you have to go to Modeler. Now we are in the Modeler. And in the Modeler, you see Yarn and Yarn Sections. So you select two yarns. With Shift-click, you can select different parts. Huh? So now they are both selected. And we have to edit the section. So 
So let's go to section. Yeah. So section is now set to interpolate between nodes. Instead, we should have a constant section. Let's edit it. It should be a constant section which is round and the size. Should be an ellipse, so let's, uh, not, in order not to make it difficult, instead of a power ellipse, and it should be 0 0.15 in our units. Yes. So now we say these have a round section, pressing on OK, OK. The, the reason that this top falls away is because they, they are out of the domain. You should need to set, make the domain a bit larger for that. But now you can see that this is correct. These are now round yarns that uh, intersect with each other at the midpoint. And you can investigate how well they are connecting at their uh, interconnecting point. Is this clear? Uh, it is also clear that uh, you have here quite a bit more room than you probably need. So it should be possible to decrease this yarn width section in order to obtain this. Um, let's go. Now, wonder, uh, let's go to the domain. So here you can see what your domain is. It is from minus 118 to minus 1. I'm not sure now. I don't remember. I would have to look it up. Not using it every day. But so um, let's save this now. File save. Next gen file standard. Okay. This is let's say this is a smart textile. So we can open the one because my text gen crashed. Let's open again our herringbone. Yeah, so now we have our herringbone back. So a first specialty type of woven structure is where you have your woven structure and you do quite different types of yarns in between. And you can investigate based on thickness and yarn settings what it would give. And you could, this could be uh, uh, for a smart textile, for a pressure, pressure sensor that you make, for... Um, Another option is that you um, put the fiber optics in it, and you need to in, uh, you need to evaluate what the curvature would be because they should not be curved too much. Okay, um, and as I said in the theory section, there is another way. Specialty is the multilayer. Let's have a look how we can generate multi-layer structures. So this is by clicking, going to controls to textiles, and then you go to the layered textiles. So if you click on layered textiles, the, the part here comes open. So let's assume we need to have this twill weave, and in the middle, uh, perhaps this is a heating textile, and these will be heating parts. They will be in the center. So we can use uh, the twill, we can add a layer. Then we add a layer of our five on five plain woven structure. And let's add another layer of our twill. So now we have made a multi-layer textile where, the, where, where they are just stacked one on top of the other. Yeah. And you can move layers up and down if you made an error. In this case, that's not the case. And let's press OK. It will not be, they are not on the same size, so now it will not be very 
nice to look at probably let's have a look yeah you can also see the differences in sizes that we have given over those fabrics yeah so now you see our twill and then you see our other structure he repeats it automatically add it in the center of it yeah so we see here now that because it is repeated automatically that you have your um, here this copper wire copper wire copper wire all on top of each other let's look at the rendering let's uh, not trim the trim to domain is where you cut out that is the function I was looking at before, searching for. So let's trim again. Take some computation. Okay. Um, and let's make the surface ones. Uh, let's say this one. Okay. Yeah. And you can see. how these yards are running through it and what is happening. You can make sections to look inside, etc. Uh, via the, the domain, adding planes, things like that. Okay? So here we have now seen who, how you can do um, how you can do the multi-layered and the specialty textiles. I suppose you need this one to be quite different. I mean, let's go to, as a, as a section, let's go to the modeler. Let's uh, look at our uh, section of it. Let's say instead that um, we want it to be constant. We want it to be uh, power ellipse. We want it to be lenticular. One-on-one uh, -on -one with a distortion of 0 0.5. Six, for example. Uh, so this is the lenticular. You know, it should be quite a bit smaller. Let's uh, edit it again. Edit. So it should more be like uh, zero point four, and it should be zero five, zero three, eight, eight. Uh, and we have changed what type of yarn we are using here at that location, and what the effect is of that. You can have him recompute with a refresh view. Okay. I hope all of, all of this is clear. Um, if you go into the course, then there is extra material present. Um, this will be is two so this is the section on complex yarns in woven structures uh, okay the next section ah i was wondering how can i quickly click but now I see, uh, if you go to application 3.3, in the case two, then you see that, uh, okay, this is the, the kind of things we have done with the other yarn in between, um, the layered textiles that we have done. There's an extra point, which 
will now be uh, too advanced for this training, but this is how you can do fully edit with a free woven fabric design. Uh, if you would be interested in, I want to add a part embroidered into it, I want to add a part, um, a knitted kind of structure, then you can do a full free design and you should have a look at this video, which is uh, Jason who is explaining how to do that. Uh, for further information on working with that. In our case, let's now go to the other case, the third case, which is the 3D woven structures. So, which is 3D woven structures. Yeah, and then the application part. Okay. So the text gen has, if you go back to textiles, we have now done the weaving wizard. We have done the layered textile wizard. Uh, let's now have a look at the 3D weave wizard. In the 3D weave wizard, you can see that the standard types as I have given seen in the theory, the orthogonal, so the no crimp, the angle interlock uh, in two ways, the, uh, two types of interlocks, and the layer to layer connection are predefined in the wizard, and it is possible to quickly generate those kinds of structures. Now, apart from this, I have also, we have also seen, if you press cancel, in the weave on structure, uh, there's also a possibility to create layered textile. And then um, you follow the same workflow as standard woven fabric, but um, you add here different layers of a textile. So the, the, the resulting fabric will not resemble 3D woven fabrics as you see it on the market, as they are very specifically different. Yeah. So I will not do that now. Instead, we have a look at the standard 3D woven structures. Um, um, this is the case. Let's go through the wizard ones for let's take the let's take angle interlock. Okay, you have to say how many. So now the, the interface is quite different. You have to talk about what are the weft yards, what are the warp yards, and what are the Z or the binder yards that you will be using. I will just explain now. Let's leave it with the default. So here we have four yarns in weft, three layers of weft yarns. Uh, the width is 0 0.1 on 0. Point, uh, the width is 0 0.8 on 0 0.1. So now it's not anymore the fabric height, but specifically the yarn height and yarn width and uh, the spacing between it. So if the width is 0 0.8 and the spacing is one, that means you have a gap of 0 0.2. And the spacing is from middle point to middle point. It's not the size of the space. Yeah, so if the height of the yarn is 0 0.1, 0 0.2 is more than enough space for uh, warp yarns to pass if they have the same size. So it's with a typical power ellipse section that gives you, yeah, if you change that, you immediately see what the effect is on the power ellipse. You see it a little bit changing. 0 0.6 does not do it does a lot. So the next is the total number of yarns in the warp direction. So in the warp direction, you have warp yarns and you have binder yarns. So in this case, um, the warp plus binder yarns are three. 
and you need to give a ratio of binder yarns over warp yarn. So in this case, we say we have one binder yarns for every two warp yarns. Okay? So you need to already draw out a bit the structure you want to arrive at in order to be able to use this tool. Now, the number of layers is not anymore possible to change in this section, but again, you give now first for the warp yarns, not for the binder yarns, what the spacing is, the height, and how they look. This, typically, the warp yarns are just the same as the weft yarns. Okay? If you do next, you, you have to give the data for the binder yarns. So these were all 0 0.8 wide on 0 0.1. The binder yarns are typically much smaller yarns. They are stronger yarns to keep your 3D woven structure together. They should otherwise not influence a lot of the aspect. So they are only half the width, 0 0.4. And they are only half the height. Uh, the spacing between is 0 0.5, yeah, while, while it is 1, uh, so to go to a binder yard uh, between a warp and a warp, it's, it's, it's 1, between a binder and a warp, uh, because it's 1, 2, it will be a spacing of 0 0.5. Uh, you can again say how it looks like. And then at the top, you have extra values on the domain, default domain, 10% of the domain height. Okay. Then you come into how this runs. So we have our warp yarns uh, running from left to right and our weft yarns. And you can see again, you can switch with the right mouse button between these uh, warp yards. Okay? And you see every time how it runs. So the warp yard, typically you cannot really change that because in this kind of construction that we have chosen, they are fixed. However, the binder yard, which is the green one, you can change should be possible to select here. Why is that not? Okay. Uh, it's still by clicking on, uh, by clicking at the top, uh, you can change how the binder yard is uh, working. And because it's a type of angle interlock that we selected, it goes one over one in order to do that. Yeah? So once you have the structure that you want, you press OK. And the structure is made. Let's have a look at the side of our binder yarn. And you can see what the resulting construction is. So it's uh, likewise to the woven structure, except that uh, the type of type of uh, construction that you make are quite uh, different. Yeah. So Let's do an example uh, and make, so this is not, uh, this is not orthogonal, eh? this is angle interlock. So let's make a no crimp construction instead, where we are using um, orthogonal, an orthogonal uh, construction. Let's have a look at my slides, if I have some extra material there first. Yeah, so this was what we have done. Yeah, this is changing of the cross section. So a good assignment, this previous one where we had two conductive yarns is if you were able to cross your yarns 
uh, making sure that the conductive yards are not touching in case you want to make a circuit. Can you with a woven structure do that with a simple woven structure? And this is a kind of thing that uh, students, uh, if there's more time, because it, uh, this is not something you do in one, two, three, if you are able to do that. So the multi-layer, okay, we have seen the free woven fabric design, uh, the link to that YouTube you find it in the course, but it's also here. Um, so for the 3D woven structures, I said this here, this structure A is the no crimp, the orthogonal uh, 3D woven structure. You have through the thickness, the one that we have actually just made in the text gen, angle interlock. You have the layer to layer angle interlock, which is on every layer. You have some specialty forms fully uh, fully made um, okay so in text gen you have the three standards that are available we have now done a uh, first type of angle interlock um, a layer to layer let's skip this now let's uh, go immediately to the no crimp so in the no crimp these are the data to set uh, as a, for our example, for example, uh, five yarns on four layers with a spacing of one, 0 0.8, 0 0.5, get a sort of um, pressed down ellipsoid structure. And in the warp direction, 10 warps with a ratio of binder to warp yards of one on one. And then uh, for the yarn layers for the warp three layers with the spacing of uh, a width of 0 0.8 with spacing one and a height of 0 0.5 yes so let's enter all that data we'll put it here to the left put this to the right say 3d weave we do orthogonal okay next so five yarns, four layers, we do a height of 0 0.5, and we leave the power helix on 0 0.6. Yeah, try to follow, but uh, the image is still open here. Then, total number of yards in the war direction Let's take 10, one binder yarn to one warp yarn, three layers of uh, warp yarns, which are otherwise the same size as the weft yarn, so 0 0.5 high also. Yeah? Next. Now we need to enter the binder yarns. And so the binder yarns again, and they were 0 0.5 high. Now we take very small binder yarns of 0 0.05 with a width of 0 0.1. So it's okay to have a yarn spacing of 0 0.15, uh, the, the width with the height to give room to pass. Yeah. Now, the target thickness uh, you need to set. So, um, so, we have three layers. Of, uh, height 0 0.5 and then we have uh, the weft yards that need to cross also four layers of 0 0.5 so that's two um, that's 1.5 three times 0 0.5 so we need we will only be able to get a realistic structure for this fab for this 3d woven structure if we are around a height a thickness of 3.5 but our binder yards also have to pass. 
So let's target the thickness of 3.7. And you have here the, the refined button. The refined button allows, will means that um, uh, text gen will try to find an as good as possible uh, estimation of how your final structure should look like. Okay. Then um, for your export to other tools and for the tools to get your cover factor and, uh, and to compute the uh, densities of your structure, you can give uh, data on your uh, left and on your boundary yard specifically. So, okay, I'm not using any of the computational tools, so I leave all that empty fiber and the fiber density but in order to make these yarns of 0. Point, so we have weft yarns of uh, 0. 0.5 on 0. 0.8 um, you can give what the fiber diameters are uh, that are used so in order to simplify it I give here a fiber diameter of 0. 0.5 on one fiber per yard so it's like monofilament uh, deformable yards and the same then the same fiber diameter with one fiber per yard for the 3d for the binder yards yeah so i leave this open also so that we can now give this uh, value the binder yarn so what did we say for the binder yarn 0 0.1 0 0.005, 0 0.15 yarn spacing. Uh, I did a power ellipse here of 0 0.8. And the target thickness pre-computed already, 3.6, that's okay. So we just leave those as is. So I will give a fiber diameter a set of the yarn width with uh, one fiber per yard and the same for the binder yarn 0 0.05 one, one fiber per yard um, wrong here this was the weft yarn and the warp yarn will be the same so this has to be 0 0.5 and only then we have the binder yarn so 0 0.05 fiber diameter and one fiber per yard, yeah? So that's it, everything is given. Let him generate the structure for getting a weave pattern. So now you see this, let's make it a bit bigger. See that we obtain the binder yarns on the warp yarns and the weft yarns. And you can again select uh, with the right mouse button, you can select your structure to see a bit if the values you gave are good. And you can also select your uh, binder yarns. And in the orthogonal, you can click where it goes through. Uh, for example, here like that. Here, inverted. So this is quite a dense structure that I am now writing. So that is with the left mice button uh, that you can generate it. Let's go back here. So, okay, I did it differently there. So let's do as I did in the example in the course, just the other way around. So it's actually a plain weave, the binary art, you could say. You can see that the way that uh, if I would leave this structure, then suddenly these uh, weft yards would be pushed much closer to each other as they are at the moment. Yeah, so now I generated the same structure. Yeah. 
So for, for layer to layer, you need to drag here at the bottom. Um, but this is not the case now. Again, you can still do edits as a different yarn width height for specific ones. But you see that there is one binder yarn. There are, however, three uh, warp yards on top of each other. Yeah, so if you press OK, it will start to compute. And it can take some time, this computation. So this is the result. This is your intermediate result. Looks nice. So if you go to domain, if you go to rendering and you do not trim to domain, you will see our domain seems to be a little bit too cut off. You will see more how they run through all your different yarns. This looks like a good no crimp, except there's a clear error. These top yards, in light of the amount of space we have available, uh, TextGen has deformed them into a structure that is flat at the bottom and round at the top, yeah, which is not very realistic. And if you have a sample that is made to investigate, uh, yeah, you might know by the type of yarn you have that this is not uh, realistic. So you need to clean this up. So how to clean this up? You can go in the rendering. Uh, in the controls, you go to the modeler. Um, and if we select here a yarn, it becomes white. If you go to section, edit section. Yeah, so if you go to constant edit section, you can see that uh, this section, I will do it again so you can follow. And so you select one of these yarns at the top or the bottom, and you press section. Uh, what is now present is if you select constant edit section. You can see what is present. This is a constant section with uh, two parts, a red part and a green part. So the red part is a flat line. The green part is um, a power ellipse. And there are two points where it connects. So you have a power ellipse connecting to uh, a section. So all these specialized sections are possible. Uh, this, of course, is not what we need. So let's correct this. The easiest way to correct this is to, in your controls, go back to textiles. Um, and you do again, uh, instead of 3D weave, you do edit. And you will edit this structure. Now, if you edit, OK, next. Um, this should be the same values. Let me double check that. 5410.8. Okay. We changed here the height. So let's set the height back to 0 0.5 as we want it. Then for the warp yarns, I assume the same. The height has to be 0 0.5. And he changed the yarn spacing. Let's put it back to 1. It's almost the same, but doesn't matter. Yeah, so the same values that you had before for the binder yarn. Zero. Yeah, he changed the spacing. Let's do it back to 1.5. Um, 0.8. Target thickness we cannot change anymore. The main thing to change is here, this refine. We do not select it. It is default off. 
So make sure you are not refining when you do your edit. This should also be the same. Click OK. You will recompute. Still computing. Okay. So this looks more like what we want. So when we have made a full structure of how these 3D woven, no crimp uh, structures are uh, made and generated. So you can see that we have somewhat too much space. In reality, you would want those together. So we can further refine how the lookout would be by doing edits in the yarn spacing, by doing edits in different ways. You could also edit the sections yourself, of course, while busy. So that was overview of working with basic overview of working with text gen to do woven structures. We have seen how to do the standard structures with the weave wizard, how to do layered structures, how to do composites, uh, composites, sorry, how to do 3D woven structures, which are typically used for composites. Um, I would say uh, investigate. I could give an assignment, but this this is not uh, this is not in the section now. I would say if we still have ten minutes, so if you have questions, uh, let's hear them. And uh, should there be no sections, I would say try to generate. Uh, have a look at a textile in your neighborhood that you are having a shirt or whatever something that you can see that it's woven and see if you can uh, generate uh, a facsimile with uh, text gen of it. And this is the type of assignment we often do with the students after they have seen how to work with text gen, that they are given a piece of textile and they have to recreate it with, uh, they have to recreate it with uh, text gen. Okay, and so this is the type of assignment we are given, giving uh, our students. Now there is a advanced usage that you can interface with Python. You can export for Abacus. If you come, if if you would come to Ghent in uh, the end of the year, around November probably, then we will have a look at that. If you are not coming to Ghent and you want to learn, then you should have a look at case four of the optim text course and you will find their information and video also on how to export uh, you do need abacus student edition for that and the example we are giving is with grading because abacus student edition has a limited amount of notes that are available uh, so it's a limited edition of the full abacus and the woven structure has even small woven structures quickly have more notes than, um, than allowed in the student edition. This is why we are having an example with the graded structure. But that's it for me. Uh, does anybody have questions on the woven, uh, on the practical work or on the theory that uh, I have given? Thank you, Benny, for the very nice structured course. I tried to follow the main part of it, despite of some interruptions.